I'm Callie Williams with the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program. This month for our sandwiching and history tour, we are focusing on the Winchester Auto Store in downtown Little Rock, now the home of Polk Stanley Wilcox Architects. Join us as we learn more about this now commercial area of downtown Little Rock and the Winchester Auto Store and its place in the auto history of Arkansas. Welcome to the July 2020 Sandwiching and History Tour of the Winchester Auto Store in downtown Little Rock. This art modern style commercial building was built by Dennis and Maud Winchester in 1947 to serve as the Winchester Auto Store and is now home to Polk Stanley Wilcox Architects. Much of the research for this script is based on previous work done by Amber Jones in compiling the National Register nomination for the building in 2018. A permanent settlement at what would become the city of Little Rock was founded in the spring of 1820 near a point of rocks known locally as the Little Rock, with a post office established at the site by March of the same year. The block that now contains the Winchester Auto Store was part of the original plat of the city of Little Rock at the corner of then Holly Street and Spring Street. This area was to the south of the main original commercial core of the city that was then focused on the riverfront. By 1850, Little Rock was home to over 2,000 residents and was an important economic, political, and civic hub for the region. The Arkansas River was the main transportation network for the area, and Little Rock was an ideal port for a wide swath of central Arkansas. The population of the city would explode from over 3,000 in 1860 to over 12,000 in 1870 and then to over 38,000 by 1900. By the 1890s, the area around the intersection of Spring Streets and now 8th Street was a long-established residential area with homes of various sizes. It was also racially diverse. According to local census data, city directories, and Sanborn maps of the area, the makeup of the neighborhoods included both rental and owner-occupied properties and both black and white occupants throughout. This area may have been more diverse as it was also close to the 9th Street commercial area that featured many black-owned and operated businesses and professional offices. The West 9th Street commercial area became known locally as the Line, in reference to the economic and social line that often separated white and black residents of the segregated South. By the early 20th century, the West 9th Street commercial area was anchored by several large black businesses, including the Mosaic Templars of America's large complex of buildings along Broadway, as well as the Taborian Temple, built as a meeting hall and commercial investment by the Knights and Daughters of the Tabor, another black fraternal insurance organization. By the 1930s, the third floor of the Taborian Temple would become the home of the well-known Dreamland Ballroom, a venue that hosted performances by Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, Dizzy Gillespie, B.B. King, Ray Charles, and many others. There were also several large African-American churches throughout the surrounding area. Although many businesses in the area had been devastated by the depression of the 1930s, the West 9th Street commercial area was helped by a boom of activity during the war years of the 1940s. Black soldiers in the area often flocked to the area's clubs, cafes, restaurants, and theaters for entertainment. After the Civil War, the area continued to be primarily residential, with churches and small businesses scattered throughout. By the late 19th century, the area around the block at West 8th Street and Spring Street continued to be a predominantly residential neighborhood, just like it had been from the earliest founding of the city of Little Rock. Also in the 1880s, as evidenced in maps of the period, the surrounding blocks included collections of small residences noted as Negro tenements, most likely dwellings that were rented to multiple families at a time. The residential nature of the area also included churches, with the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church located in the block to the west, while in the block to the northeast was the First Methodist Episcopal Church South, a predominantly white congregation, now the location of the large First United Methodist Church complex on Center Street. By 1900, the city of Little Rock was growing rapidly, with new railroads, telephones, electricity, sewers, paved streets, streetcars, and many other civic improvements and new businesses. The main residential growth in the city continued in newly annexed land to the south and west, and new neighborhoods continued to be developed. 
By the early 1930s, the population had more than doubled and the city boasted new parks, a zoo, baseball fields, new schools, and a new passenger railroad station. In the area surrounding the block that would become the home of the Winchester Auto Store, the early residential neighborhood had been slowly transforming into a more commercial area. The first large-scale new businesses in the area were lumber yards that often took up full city blocks. The open ditch or creek that was formerly known as the Town Branch, fed by the spring that gave Spring Street its name, had been covered by the early 1900s, and the area's streets had been improved. The variety of homes in the area were slowly giving way to more commercial buildings, with small rows of storefronts appearing as well as several large livery stables. A few houses of varying size still remained on scattered lots. By 1939, the surrounding blocks had transformed to a predominantly commercial area with an emphasis on automotive-related businesses. Various commercial storefronts, automotive service and storage facilities, gas stations, used car lots, and large open lots had replaced the single-family residents of the previous decades. This echoed the automotive-focused transformation of the nearby Broadway Street, a part of the Bankhead Highway that crossed over the Arkansas River across the new Broadway Bridge which was completed in 1923. The Bankhead Highway, also known as Highway 1A and then as U.S. Highway 70 in Arkansas, was an early cross-country automotive highway that was built with federal funding authorized by an act of Congress in 1916. The Bankhead Highway was designed to provide an automobile route between Washington, D.C. and San Diego, California. The highway designation, the opening of the Broadway Bridge, and the commercial nature of the area meant that Broadway Street in downtown Little Rock became a major automobile thoroughfare through the heart of the city, with many automobile-related businesses springing up along Broadway and on surrounding streets. In the 1930s, near the intersection of 8th and Spring Streets, just one block off Broadway Street, corner lots in the area were usually filling stations and car sales lots, with various businesses in between, including a lumber yard, a stone cutter, furniture stores, auto body repair, and a few remaining churches. By 1939, the lot that would become the Winchester Auto Store was dedicated to a used car sales business with a small frame office standing at the center of the open-air paved lot. The adjacent lot to the south had been a large enclosed livery stable and was now an indoor car storage facility, with large auto repair and sales businesses nearby. A small number of residences could still be found on isolated lots on adjacent streets. The Art Modern style building at the corner of 8th and Spring Streets in downtown Little Rock was started in 1946 and completed by 1947 as the new home of the Winchester Auto Stores Incorporated. This company was started by Dennis Denny Edwin and Maud Messenger Winchester of Little Rock sometime in the 1930s. Maud Messenger was born in Arkansas after her family had moved to Arkansas from Kansas sometime just before she was born. By 1900, the Messenger family was in Little Rock and by 1915, Maud was working in downtown, possibly as a secretary or a clerk. It is also possible that Maud and Denny Winchester met downtown while both were working. Dennis Denny Edwin Winchester had moved from Grant County, Arkansas to Little Rock with his mother and father by 1910. He then worked as a sales clerk downtown, and based on surviving historical records, it appears that Denny Winchester had been married in 1910 to a Miss Lillian Cullens. However, she died in 1911. Denny Winchester were married in October of 1915 to Maud Messenger, and the two would have their only child, a daughter Frances, in 1916. By the end of the 1920s, both Maude and Denny Winchester were working for Odie Tucker Auto Stores in Little Rock. Denny Winchester was soon promoted to be the manager of the Tucker Auto Store in Pine Bluff. And according to family lore, the marriage between Maude and Denny was not a happy one after the 1920s. After 1930, it appears that Maude and Denny lived apart, with Maude living in Little Rock with her parents and their extended family, and Denny living in Pine Bluff. Although they may have lived apart for decades, it did not stop them from creating and running a successful auto-centered business and opening and operating several stores. It seems that they may have been better business partners than partners in marriage. By 1939, the Winchesters owned and operated a store at 416 West 7th Street, as well as a store in Pine Bluff under the name Winchester Auto Stores. Maude operated the store in Little Rock, while Denny managed the store in Pine Bluff. Soon, they would also have locations in North Little Rock and Camden. 
After World War II, a booming economy helped fuel the demand for automobiles and all of the associated auto service and parts businesses across the country. In Little Rock, this spurred the Winchester Auto Store Company to commission a new, purpose-built auto parts and service store at the corner of 8th Street and Spring Street. It appears that Maude Winchester played an active role in the design of the building, as well as the development of the Little Rock location's business. The new building included an inner office space that would have been her private office, including food storage, a cedar-lined closet, and a separate bathroom space, all separated from the locker and bathroom space that would have served the all-male sales and mechanical staff. The design of the building echoed the common, streamlined automotive design trends of the time classical hallmarks of the popular contemporary art modern style. The building's main entrance is located along the rounded corner of the building facing the intersection at 8th and Spring. Flanked by rounded glass block panels that emphasized the curved corner entry space and created a protected entry portal. Above the corner doorway, just below the roof line, the original business name was spelled out in large letters, Winchester Auto Store. The main front facade faces 8th Street and features large expanses of glass topped by tall transom windows. These large windows provided most of the natural light for the interior of the building and allowed those walking or driving by to see the automotive wares within. Light was allowed to filter through the whole building through the use of large expanses of interior glass curtain walls near the machine shop and service bays at the rear of the building. The rear service bay still includes its original garage door, although it has lost its original elaborate Winchester Auto Store illuminated sign, as evidenced in an early historic photograph of the building. Overall, the building was mostly utilitarian in form and style, with only small touches of streamlined design elements seen in the more public spaces of the building, and especially on the front facade along 8th Street. The art modern style was often seen as not just buildings, but in consumer products and transportation design, including trains and automobiles and even ships. Although at first glance this building may look like a standard commercial property, its art modern detailing points to its place in the rich history of the rise and proliferation of the automobile in modern culture. It is also a testament to the hard work and dedication of Maude and Denny Winchester, who provided parts and service to a growing automotive industry in central Arkansas. By 1950, the area around the Winchester Auto Store was dominated by automobile-related businesses, including six filling stations, seven used auto sales lots, five auto sales and service garages, an auto body shop, and both indoor and outdoor auto storage lots. Other businesses in the surrounding area included home supply-related businesses, including plumbing, paint, and wallpaper stores. During the late 1950s and 1960s, the area was radically transformed by the urban renewal campaigns that would decimate the Black Business District of West 9th Street and introduce the canyon cut of Interstate 630 that would divide the downtown area roughly in half from east to west. This resulted in dividing parts of the commercial core of Little Rock from the more residential areas to the south by cutting off some of the through north and south streets, such as Spring Street. The urban renewal programs of the mid-20th century, although originally promoted as a push to modernize areas of blight in the city, often focused on predominantly black residential and commercial areas while continuing and reinforcing segregation. All that is left of the once vibrant and dense West 9th Street Black commercial area is the Taborian Hall and a few scattered buildings along Broadway. Many of the mid-century buildings that replaced the original residential neighborhoods are also now disappearing. The Winchester Auto Store continued to operate at this location until 1978, although part of this time it was operated under the name Quality Auto Parts. In 1978, the business at this location was sold, however the family retained ownership of the building. Denny Winchester had died in 1971, while Maud Winchester lived to the age of 93, passing away in 1990. The building continued to stay under family ownership until 2016. However, by the early 2000s, the Winchester Auto Store building was languishing being used intermittently as storage for various groups, including the Arkansas Opera Theater, or simply standing vacant from the late 1970s until recently, when the building was purchased by Polk Stanley Wilcox Architects for use as their new office headquarters. 
They worked to renovate the building to fit their office needs while still maintaining much of the original in interior material and fabric of the building, including large swaths of interior metal and glass gridded windows, interior exposed hollow clay tile walls, the mechanical parts lift, and the low ceilinged upper mezzanine space. We were able to catch up with Mr. David Porter, principal and CEO at Polk Stanley Wilcox Architects recently, to find out more about their work on this interesting historic building. Oh, that goes at least six years ago, prior to our move, we began to look at opportunities and we, we sort of stopped and started on that. Uh, over time, uh, we were in a multi-tenant lease building down at Cottondale Lane in Riverdale, which was a lovely spot as far as our view of the river there, but we didn't own the building and we wanted to find a, a place that uh, could be ours, that we could own, that could have some architectural character, a little bit more reflective of what we do, and that we could um, uh, uh, be our own landlord and pay ourselves rent. And so we, we spent some uh, two or three different times taking runs at different opportunities, some that would be um, uh, other existing buildings to buy and renovate. Uh, we found things that were you know, either too large or too small or not in the right place or not of the right character. We wanted to be uh, in the downtown Little Rock uh, area, but we were not tied to specifically the right downtown. And, uh, and you know, so we, we, we made good runs and stopped several times. Finally, um, a year and a half before we found this building, we made one last run engaged uh, John Martin with Moses Tucker to go find some things that maybe we had overlooked and uh, he came up with this building along with a couple of others that we shortlisted and um, when, we, when we walked into this building we uh, we knew it was it was the place if we could make it happen so we were excited to finally find it there were probably three three or four things that that we we were looking for we were looking for a building that was the right size this building was almost perfect for what we were looking for and uh, giving us a little bit of growth space from what we had. Something that had architectural character, uh, hopefully in a, in a mid-century modern or a modern, uh, a little bit of a modern uh, take. Uh, and this fit the bill with its uh, age and uh, design and this uh, sort of simplified art modern style. So it had character, it had substance with the concrete frame building that it was. Uh, and it also had just a lot of in, uh, character inside, and uh, we, you'll see in, in the video some of the things that drew us with the materials. Happiest find was that we walked into the building and we realized that it had never been significantly altered from the time it was built in 1947 as Winchester Auto Parts. No one had come in and put in a lot of dividing walls, ceilings, systems, and it was very much spatially like it always was. And to, think, to find things like the complete steel glass window wall that separates the garage from the, uh, the, the rest of the building completely intact, almost uh, out, of, out of hundreds of panes of windows, only like six broken out, uh, that was amazing to us, to find it in that good of condition. And um, that we, so we knew that, that we weren't going to have to undo a lot. And we could really see the, the space for what it was, and we could see how it perfectly would fit what we do as an architectural firm. We had a, had a great core and shell, we had a great frame and bones of the building. The building had been neglected from a standpoint of, of maintenance for a long time, so it needed a completely new roof. It had never had air conditioning in it, so it, we had to uh, find a way to, to do that and to all, both level out the floor from a couple of different uh, places where the doors were and to hide our air conditioning ductwork. We decided to do the raised floor system, which would allow us to keep the space really clean. And we debated on that a long time because it was an expense, but we feel like that felt like it was worth it for the, uh, for the effect of, of not uh, putting a lot of things in the ceiling space and allowing that to be really open and clean. So uh, probably solving our air conditioning uh, design was the, was the uh, biggest challenge we had. We have 44 people total in our firm. We have 12 of those in Fayetteville in our Northwest Arkansas office. Our whole staff, uh, we're all inspired by several things about the building. One, just to, we were energized to move 
at all uh, into a new space, to move into something that's architecturally significant, to move into a space that we could all really be together in, in one uh, a bit more open area in our, in our previous space. We were in a, a, a chopped up area that had grown three times and we were almost three separate studios just spatially. And so to have um, to be able to put our studio in what was the former uh, auto parts showroom, which is one large space, but not overwhelmingly large, with beautiful north light, it was the perfect studio. When we walked in and we saw it for the first time, we just we knew this was going to be a wonderful place to um, to work in. Uh, we're all very open to the studio, our offices, uh, which are have all open fronts, and and we can all be together. We have a much more collaborative. Um, workflow now we have many more places to, to gather and uh, and work and we just frankly we just see each other a little bit more and uh, that along with just being downtown we, we really love being part of the downtown environment so all of those things together have made it, um, it just move the needle way up on um, just kind of our cultural um, enthusiasm, I think, and really in a lot of ways has jump-started our firm. Thank you for joining us for our monthly sandwiching and history tour. For more information on upcoming tours, please check out our website at ArkansasPreservation.com and our Facebook channel under Arkansas Historic Preservation. You can also check out our past sandwiching and history tours on our YouTube channel under Arkansas Preservation. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you and your family and friends continue to stay safe and healthy. Our next Sandwiching and History Tour will be of the Sappington Rhineman House in Little Rock. This tour will take place as a virtual tour, premiering on our Facebook page on Friday, August 7th at noon. Please check our Facebook page and our website at ArkansasPreservation.com for the most up-to-date information on our tours and programs. We will continue to provide virtual tours until it is safe to return to in-person tours in the future.